Hello, and welcome back to Youth Code Jam's online Bits and Bytes lessons. Um, we did have a bit of a break last week because of the holiday, so um, this week will be more regular, but it will look a little different. So for the month of June, uh, we'll have Bits and Bytes lessons available um, on Mondays, as usual, at 8 a.m. Wednesdays are going to look a little different. We will still be promoting coding lessons, but they're going to not be strictly Bits and Bytes. And if you've seen on our social media, um, you'll know what that's about. But once I'm recording a little early, so I can't get into too much to it, but it'll be really fun. Um, it's going to be a really good, it's going to be an ongoing project and it's going to be um, a really cool one that I think a lot of students will enjoy. Um, it's kind of like this one where it's going to use a real world activity and really show you like coding concepts and how that works in it. So today we're going to bake a cake. This activity was inspired by a program I recently worked on. It was our um, third through sixth grade project-based learning activity um, that we did in partnership with ProMesa Academy. And what they did is they learned about all the different efforts people in our community have been making to help with food insecurity. And then they came up with different kinds of recipes. So some of these were literal recipes like how to make stir fry. Some of these were a recipe for friendship or a recipe to help. Um, but I was really um, inspired by what the kids did. They came up with some amazing projects. And then I uh, just kind of saw that there was a lot of coding concepts that we could cover and showing you what a recipe is. You know, a lot of times we say that a recipe is like an algorithm because it follows a series of steps to complete. Um, and so does a program, it goes through a series of steps to finish. So we're going to see how the, um, how baking a cake is like an, alg is like an algorithm. Um, and also a couple other concepts today. So like I said before, you're still going to get lessons Mondays and Wednesdays. Wednesdays is just going to look a little different. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays will continue. We will still have our live sessions at 4 p.m. While it's encouraged that um, students work on the activities before they come to the live session, just because it's only a 40 minute session, we don't have uh, necessarily the time to do the whole program. If it's started and not finished, that's fine. If they haven't started because they have questions, that's also fine. This is really a time for them to get help or to show off what they did, or if they want, we can do some of the adventure mode activities with them. You do have to register for those. It's free um, and you'll just get an email with um, with the password and link to it. That's for security purposes. I'm going to go to Google. So you'll just go to youthcodejam.org and under our, sorry, under our Jam at Home page, you'll go to Bits and Bytes Online. And then, so this was our activity from uh, the week following Memorial Day. And you'll have so as usual, the newest videos from us will be up top. The Wednesday lessons are going to be stored elsewhere and we'll show you where those will be um, once everything goes live for that project. But you will have access to it. It will still be a free activity that you can do. Um, for us, our any activity sheets will be here. Some of these are going to, um, we're creating new ones. So it might be a little later that we have some, the Spanish translations done. So we're basically creating activities as we go now and trying to make sure we have at least one sheet there for you. Um, but just under here, you'll click on the screen button and it will take you to our active page and you can sign up for either next lesson or as many of the sessions that you want. And like I said, you don't have to have the activity completed, but if you've at least looked at it and if it, um, have maybe tried it out that would be helpful when you come so that way we can answer any questions that you have or if you just want to work through it with somebody we can do that too so today's activity is going to be in scratch so once it's uploaded on the site you'll just click on the link and it will um, open in a separate tab or maybe a new window depending on how your browser is configured and you'll just come up here and hit this download button um, obviously this is not the one we'll be using. If you don't want to download it for whatever reason, you don't have to. You can just leave it in your browser and switch back and forth, um, what's ever easier for you to do. I have our activity sheet downloaded already for this current lesson. So we're going to come over here. I'm going to make my browser just a little taller. 
I'm gonna close. Can I close this? Okay. Um, so here's our PDF that we'll be using. And I don't think I've ever talked about this before. So real quick before I pull up Scratch, these circles at the top indicate the difficulty level. Um, so if it's just one circle, it's gonna be pretty easy if it's one circle that's filled in. So this is kind of like our measy, or sorry, combined medium and easy. Our uh, easy levels right here, this is more of a medium. This is starting to be really challenging. So the reason this one is maybe more challenging is because it's a little longer activity sheet. I think that um, anyone who's been working with Scratch for any length of time or really even a new person to Scratch could pick this up pretty quickly, but we didn't want to, um, you know, you, you, over, you overestimate how difficult it might be and then everyone surprises you. But I think that, um, especially with the video, we'll be able to do it just fine. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna do this in Scratch. So I've gone to Scratch. Um, your page might look a little different. I'm signed into my account, so it's still, so my homepage looks a little different than when it doesn't. That's okay, you should still have this Create button up here at the top. Go ahead and click Create. Loading. All right, so the only difference between, um, if you don't have an account, that's fine, you don't need it for this activity. You might have the tutorials window that's popped up here in the middle. You can just go ahead and click that. Uh, there's a white X, I think, with the word close underneath it. Go ahead and close that there. And then we're gonna delete this sprite because we want different, we're actually gonna use several sprites. So like I said, um, baking a cake is like an algorithm. We're also gonna talk about variables. I don't know if we've used them um, in our past activities. I can't remember because it's been a few months now. Um, but we're actually gonna talk about the concepts a little bit more with this lesson, but it's still gonna be fun. You guys are gonna have um, a fun game afterwards with some, a lot of room to personalize it and play with the code. So the first thing we're gonna do is get, a, um, get our sprite, and I went with something called Characters 1. So I went to choose my sprite, and then I chose, I actually went to People, because I decided I wanted it to be a person instead of animal. And you can see here you have characters one and characters two. You can use whatever one you want. Um, I thought these were cool because, so this is the default image for characters one. You can come over here to costumes and you can see that there's all kinds of different characters. And I just thought that was kind of cool. Um, I think these are new sprites. I haven't seen them before, but the other one is the same one. So you just get a lot of different people who look a little bit more like normal people. Some of the sprites are always really silly. Um, so sometimes that's not as fun to use or it's not the right tone that you want. Or I know just some students aren't always happy with how the other people characters look. Um, and then you have the ones with that are real people that are just cut out images. And those are always interesting to see, but these were kind of fun. Um, so you can pick whichever one you want from this. You can also use characters too. Um, real quick, I'll show you what that one looks like. So characters two is right here and you can see it goes through, there's even more. So it's all different. Um, and I think it was really fun. So you can see here, like some of these are really cartoony, um, which are fine, you know, they're still fun. And then you have the real people ones, which I just think are so funny. Um, but I just thought these were kind of cool and I think they're new to it. Um, I haven't noticed them before, so I thought they would be fun to use for this activity. Um, so the one I used in my, I think I used this one, yeah, I used the girl with the braid here. And then I'm just going to switch back to code by going to the left of my screen up here. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my background. So there's not really a kitchen, so I went with what I thought was the second best option, which was called, um, it's called room. Room two. I went with room two because there's a table that I can put our ingredients on. Um, and I figured that was good enough because it is, we're going to use our imagination. Um, you could also use the refrigerator because it looks a little bit more like you're at least in a kitchen. Um, but that's up to you. I'm going to stick with what's on the activity sheet so that you guys can follow along with that. Okay, so that was page one, step two. We're going to scroll down to page three. And on page three, we're gonna need more things to make our activity and to make our cake. So we're gonna go into our sprites 
um, back into the sprite drawer basically and download the bowl, the egg, milk, and cake. Um, and if you remember from any of our previous activities, it does matter what order things are. I'm going to move that over. I'm going to move her over here because we're going to put all of our stuff on the table. It doesn't matter what order you put things in. So if you want something in front, you want to kind of download it last, unless you're going to take care of it in the code. Um, so I'm going to download the bowl, and then I'm going to download the egg. And you can scroll through like we did for the characters one, or you guys can type it in. It just depends what you're used. So the next one I would do is um, bowl milk. I want milk next. So I'm scrolling just so you can see it. I'm sorry if it's a little glitchy. So I'm going to choose the milk, and then I'm going to get the cake. So one last time. Okay, so, and you can see I kind of organized it over here on our table a little bit. So I'm going to do that again. Um, and actually, I probably should have had the bowl come last there, so that should move it. Yeah, you see how I moved the thumbnail to the end here? That put that on the top layer of my scene. Um, so, but we're going to put the cake back there. I'm going to put the bowl right in front. Um, and it's very important at this step that you don't put the egg and the milk right next to each other. Kind of put them, give them some space. So if you can, you can tell here that I've left them on opposite sides of the table. That looks cluttered. It won't look so cluttered in a minute. So let's go back to our activity sheet. We're on step four. So we're going to do, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply some code to the cake. So what we don't want is the cake to be visible at the start of the program because it shouldn't exist yet. We haven't gathered our ingredients. We haven't cooked it. It shouldn't be there. So we're gonna hide it when the program starts. And we're gonna use do that by going back into our program going to the events drawer on the left um, and clicking events and grabbing the win green flag clicked block and then we're going to go to the looks drawer and grab the hide block so that it's hidden when the program starts but it's still a part of the program so now if i hit the green flag oh i did that on the wrong one so i'm going to delete that whoops um and then i'm going to come back to if you come to your sprites panel, make sure bowl is there and click the show so that it's visible. Um, I forgot this step. Make sure the cake is your active sprite. So you click on the cake in the sprite panel and it should have the blue outline on it with the trash can. And now I'm just going to grab the hide since I'm in the look store. Now we'll add that code with the win green flag click and hide. So now, now the cake is hidden. So that was an easy start. Now we're gonna to go to characters one and we're going to grab another when green flag clicked. And this is gonna be, this code is all gonna be about setup for the most part. Um, so we're just getting things into existence and into place. There will be some accounting for changes, but not too much. So in step five, we have the character sprite. Now we're gonna create two variables and we're gonna use the variables to count the number of eggs and milk that we collect, um, that we gather. So when you're working with a recipe, especially baking, you have very specified um, amounts of ingredients that you would use. So you might use, um, let's think about macaroni and cheese. You might use um, half a cup of milk and then half a stick of butter, which is four tablespoons of butter. So you need to have that exact amount or your food's going to be off. And sometimes it's off just a little bit and it's fine. And sometimes it's off and it's a disaster. So it's very important that we follow um, the recipe. And in order to kind of replicate that in code, we're going to show you, we're going to keep track of that like a very with the variables. Um, so a variable, if you haven't learned before, is just Object is not the right word. It's a, a variable is a representation of something. So in this case, we're representing our amounts of ingredients. Um, you could also use it to represent, um, a common example in coding is kind of like a, uh, a bank account. So you can use it to represent somebody's um, 
expenses and then have their income. And it would, you would just have that variable. And then what variables allow you to do is update and change the values. Um, instead of just having a hard coded value that you can't do anything with. Um, so that's why we use variables is so that we can change things as we work through the program. So to do that, we're gonna go back into Scratch, go to the variables drawer on the left side, click make a variable, and it doesn't matter which one you do first, I'm going to do A and click OK. And then I'm going to do make a variable again and type milk and click OK. And so now we have our variables, we're gonna do our setup part of the program. So when we start, we want our sprite to be on this part of the screen. We don't want them over here, um, just because it, it doesn't look nice. And also it's part of the program, we're gonna move our sprite back and forth to collect things. So we're going to go to the motion drawer and get the go to X and Y block. And I'm changing the values to negative 156. So if you notice, I clicked in and the whole thing highlighted. And then I just took my cursor to the end and clicked after that last one. And I'm just going to backspace twice and type 156. So I don't have to retype that whole thing. If you clicked in and started retyping, that's fine. Um, if you're new, the negative sign is up on your keyboard next to the zero. So it's between the zero and the key with the plus and equal sign on it. It has two little lines on it. That will give you your minus sign. And then I'm gonna do the same in Y. So if you see I clicked in once the whole thing is highlighted, I'm gonna click after the nine and hit backspace and type a three. So that's gonna position my sprite over here at the left side of my screen. And I was pretty close, it just moved her up a little bit. And then next, we're going to go to the variables drawer and make sure our variables are always start at zero. Um, so we're going to grab this set block here. And then we're going to grab another one. And you can see it defaults to eggs. That's because that's the first one we made. We're just going to use the drop down arrow here and click on milk. So when we start the program, no matter what we did before, it will always start at zero and our character will always start in this position. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our control drawer and this will, and we're gonna get a forever loop. So the reason we're using a forever loop, um, I know you've seen, sorry, control. I know you've probably done other activities where the forever loop, it just means it doesn't end, right? It continues till the end of the program. The reason we're doing that here is because if we don't, we can only collect something one time in the program. So it will start the program. And if we don't do anything, we won't be able to collect it. So this forever loop allows us to collect things multiple times and to move around our screen um, and not just do it once when the program starts. So if we left, if we put all the code that we're gonna put in here outside of the forever loop, nothing would work. Um, so the forever loop allows us to do things over and over again as the program runs. And then you just have to hit the stop sign when you want to end your program or when you reach the end of our program, which we'll see in a bit. So let's scroll on to page three. Um, still in the control drawer, we're gonna grab two if then uh, statements. And instead of, we don't wanna use if then else because they're two very situation, they're different situations that are being handled. Also, I can't seem to create it for some reason in this version of Scratch. So we're gonna do um, two nested. It's called nested because they're inside a loop already. So this is a nested if statement and they're just kind of stacked on top of each other. Okay, and now we're going to use an operator to create our condition. So the condition, this is in step 10. So the condition is um, if it's true or false, depending on what the, how the condition is set up. So normally if it's true, if it, whatever we put in this condition is true, we'll enter the if statement and execute what's ever in here, complete whatever code's in there. If it's false, it will go to the next block of code. Um, sometimes that's reverse and, you're ch and if it, everything's false, then you want to execute. But the default is normally, for most programs that I've seen, it's been if something's true, we're doing this. If it's false, we're either not or we're ending our loop. So we're going to go to our operator store. And we're going to use the and operator. And what this one does is that both of the conditions we put um, on either side of here, you see, so we inserted that into the first 
kind of plug-in spot. And then we have two more. So we're gonna have two situations that have to be true in order to do the code here. So what we're going to have be true on the first side is we're gonna to go to our, we're on step 11 now. We're gonna to go to our sensing drawer and use some blocks from there. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have this touching block and we're going to insert it into the left side. Can I make this bigger? Um, let's make that a little bigger. Um, and right now it's touching mouse pointer and then it would execute. We're gonna use the drop down and change it to the egg sprite. So if we're touching the egg sprite and something else, we're going to do something. Um, so what this does, it, so yeah, touching the sprite. Um, and now we're going to do the when we're going to do this key space press. And if you notice how I insert these is that I just kind of bring them, your cursor needs to be close to where the plugin spot is and it will highlight white when you're holding onto the block and then you can just release and it will drop in. You can change this to almost whatever key you want. I left this as the space bar. So what's going to happen with this code is that when we're, um, when we're touching the egg and we hit the space key, our number of eggs is going to go up and something else will happen, which you'll see in a second. So that was step 11. We're gonna do um, almost done with step 11. So we're gonna repeat that process for the second one. So we're gonna grab another touching block, but instead of eggs, we're gonna set it to milk. And then we're going to use the key space press again. Um, this will not matter that this is the same key because it's two separate if statements and remember both sides have to be true. So it won't affect what happened this code if we hit the space key up here or anything because both things have to be occurring for the code to execute. Okay so now in step 12 we're going to add our change variable blocks and we're just going to increase each one by one. So we're going to go back to the variables drawer and get a change block and put it in the first one, and then get a second block and put it in the second if then statement. Um, so this one, it defaults to eggs, it's already set to one, we're going to just use the drop down on the second and change it to milk. Okay, um, so that will increase it by one when, so if I'm touching the egg and I hit the space bar, it will go up by one, if I'm touching the milk carton, um, and hit the space key, it will go up by one. Okay, and we're gonna do one other thing because um, if we don't add a weight block, then it's just going to count and count and count and the program kind of freaks out about that. So we want it to pause to give us time to move around on the screen. Um, so we're going to go to the control drawer and get a weight one seconds block and insert it underneath our change blocks in both if statements. Now, I set mine to five seconds, which is a very long time. Um, you'll probably be okay if you wanna shorten that to, I think three will give, be enough seconds because you have to wait five seconds before you can hit the space bar again on anything. You will still be able to move around, but you won't be able to click anything. And you'll see when I run the code that it's going to be a little slow, um, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be fast because this isn't like a race game or anything like that. So we're not really competing in that situation. But if it's too slow for you, you can play around with the wait, the wait times. So on to page four, we're on 14. Um, and we're going to create our code real fast to move our character around. So we're gonna go to the control drawer and we're gonna grab the win space key press event block and drag two of those into our workspace. Um, and in this situation, we're not going to leave it as a space key because our space key is being used um, in a different situation, a different condition. We're going to use our um, right and left arrow keys for this. And you can use, as long as it's not the space key, you could use something else. You just need to know what, um, what those keys are representing. So we're going to use our right and left arrow keys on the keyboard to move around. And then we're going to, in step 15, we're gonna to go to the motion drawer and we're gonna grab a change by, a change X by 10 block and attach one to each of those um, event blocks we just made. 
but for the left one, we're going to change it to a negative 10. And the reason to do that is if you've worked with graphs, you know that um, moving right is positive and moving up uses positive numbers. Moving down is negative, moving left is negative. So if we want to move to the left, we need to put a negative in front of that amount. If we want to move to the right, it needs to be a positive number. Um, so we can go ahead and test out this code as it is. Uh, so you can see I'm using my arrow key, I'm moving my sprite, I'm touching the egg, so I hit one. Um, so I did just hit my space key and it's not ready to go yet. So there goes the milk. And in five seconds I can hit the egg again. Um, so it just takes five seconds to go there. So that's how that's going to work. I'm going to stop real quick. But that's good to see that that part of our code is working because that was a lot. All right, so now we're going to move on to step 16. Oh my God, it was on page four, we're on page four. We're gonna move on to step 16 and we're gonna go to the bowl. And we're going to get a um, wind green by click block and go to the look drawer. And we're gonna get the show block. So the reason we have the show block here, even though it's already showing, is because at some point in our program, we're going to have the bowl disappear. Um, but if you want to run the program multiple times in a row, you want it to come back and you don't want to have to do it manually. So we're adding the show block in here in case you want to uh, play with the program multiple times. Okay, so then next we're going to go to the control drawer and we're going to do what we did above and get the um, when we're going to get a forever block and we're going to nest an if then statement inside of it. So the same thing, like before, we want something to occur as the program is running, so that's why we need the forever block. And then we're gonna use an if then statement. Okay, so this if then statement is going to be a little bit more complicated, our condition. We're going to use, we want two things to be true, but we have to, and it's gonna be our variable amounts. So we're going to see that both variable amounts equal a certain number then we'll execute the code. So we're gonna go to our operators drawer and grab the and. And then we're going to go to up in the operators. You're gonna find right here, right above the and is the equals. And we're gonna grab one and insert it on the left and then grab another and insert it on the right. And this is a compound because we're testing, this has to be true and this has to be true, but they also have to equal, right? They have to equal those. Um, Conditional statements can get very complex. You can have a lot in a row, but Scratch pretty uh, is pretty limited in what it can do, so ours won't get too complex. So that was step 18. Now we're going to go to 19, and we're going to use our eggs and milk variables and say how much we want of them. Um, so we're going to go to the variable drawer and grab this eggs bubble and insert it into the first block. I'm going to change that 50 to 2. You could do whatever you want number wise for this. You just need to make sure that your numbers match up um, in a later spot in the code. I think we use it again, I'm not sure. Um, two is a reasonable amount of eggs to use and then we're gonna use milk. And I'm gonna change it to one. I don't think you would use more than a cup of milk in a cake if you would use milk at all, depends on your cake. Um, so I kind of went with more realistic numbers, but you can do whatever you want with those. And then moving on to step 20, we're gonna add a couple blocks. So we're gonna add a repeat block um, to simulate the mixing. So what this repeat block is gonna do is it's gonna spin the bowl around, like, and we're gonna pretend we're mixing it. And then the turn block is what does the spinning, but the repeat makes it um, spin that many times and it will return to the same position when it's done. Again, that allows you to run the program several times with things looking, um, looking normal. So go to the control drawer and grab this repeat block, insert it in here, and we're gonna click in and change that number to 24. And then in the motion drawer, um, I use this turn I guess it's right 15 degrees block. You can use either one. It shouldn't matter too much and just insert it into the, our repeat statement. All right, 21, when we're done mixing, we're gonna hide the bowl. So that's remember why we have the show up here. So we're gonna go to our looks drawer and grab the hide block. 
and we're still, notice how I'm still inside the forever block and I'm still inside this if statement. So I haven't left this condition yet. This is all still happening when these variables equal those amounts. Okay, so under the hide block, we're going to send a message to bake because we're done mixing and go ahead and put it in the oven. Um, we're gonna pretend we poured it in something. So we're gonna go to the, I believe it's events. It's events drawer, and we're going to grab this broadcast message one block and insert it under hide. And using the drop down, we're going to change the message to bake. So, just like we did with our variables, very similar process. All right, and then 23, we're going to stop this script. So, we're done with this, we're cutting it off, but we're not done with the program. So, we're going, this is in the control drawer. And we're going to get this stop block and put it underneath broadcast and this script. Um, so that will stop what's going on in here so it can jump to another script of where we're sending the message. Um, and that's important. Uh, that's important because if we don't, this kind of gets stuck and hung up and it doesn't know what to do and it tries to repeat this. So this stops all of this from executing. And then we're going to send this baked message to the cake and that's what's going to make it show. Um, but before that, if we're not careful, so like I said at the beginning, if you collect too many, um, if you collect too many ingredients, it can mess up your cake. So we're going to do something called uh, data val validation um, or error checking, however you want to look at it. And if our variables don't equal one or two, we're going to display an oops error and then stop the program, and then you can restart it and try again. So this is something we don't usually do, um, but I thought it would be fun. It also helps the um, code work, and you get to see a little bit more operators. So we're gonna make this block of code here, and before we go into it, um, I'm just gonna show you what's going on. So what's happening here is if eggs is, equal, is greater than two, or milk is greater than one, then we're going to display message saying you have too many ingredients and then we're gonna stop the program. So this stop all stops the entire program. Um, and the reason, like I said, we do that is we don't want too many ingredients. It will mess up our cake. So this is a way to validate user input and do error checking for the program. And so you display a message so that you know what went wrong. Otherwise the program just stops and you're like, I don't know what happened. Um, which is not a very fun game if it keeps stopping and you don't know why. And then this stop all is, um, so that script, the stop, this script, remember it stops that block of code from executing when we reach it. This will stop the whole program and you can press the green flag and restart. So back in our scratch block, we're gonna go to, we're still in control, so we're gonna grab this if block and attach it underneath our first if block. And then we're going to the operator's drawer and get an or block, so this or operator right here, and insert it there. Um, and then before we use equals, we're going to use, this is our greater than block. So we're saying that if the number stored here is greater than the number here, um, do this. So we're going to grab two of those, and then back in our very, sorry, variables, we're going to grab eggs, and we're going to put milk. So eggs and milk need to both be on the left side. That's very important here. It didn't matter too much up here. Technically, you could have if two equals eggs or and if one equals milk, and it would be fine. Um, but it does matter here because we want this, if this number is bigger than our uh, testing limit, which is going to be two or one in the case of milk, then we want to display our error. Um, so technically, because we're putting this on the bowl, the bowl will be telling us there's an error. I think that's funny, and it will be fine. Um, so we're going to go to our looks drawer and get a say hello for two seconds block and insert it in there and just put, whoops, we're going to type in too many ingredients. Yes, I'm sounding out the word. I'm only 80% sure that's the right spelling. And then we're gonna go back to the control drawer or the, yeah, control drawer and get a um, stop block. So here's the stop, stop all. Okay, so we're almost done. We just have a little, just two more steps to do. So 25, we're gonna go to our cake sprite 
And now we want the cake um, to be visible, but we only want it to be visible when it receives that baking message. So back in our events drawer, we're going to look for the when I receive. So it might say this message for you, but it will probably say bake. So when I receive bake, so that's the message, we're going to, um, we're going to do two things. So in the look drawer, we want to grab a go to front layer. And this is in case you um, didn't move your sprites around when I did. And that's okay if you didn't, because that's why we're adding this. This ensures that the cake pops up in front of our ingredients and it kind of gets hidden. Um, and then we're going to go to and grab this show block. And that's the end of our code. We're gonna test it out and see if it works. So go ahead and hit your green flag. Um, so my program was still running from the last time, but now I'm gonna hit stop. I'm gonna hit the green flag again. Okay, so now it's really restarted. You see my values went to zero. And I'm going over, I'm collecting the egg. I collect it, it's too soon. So this is what I mean about those five seconds is that it takes a while to go. Um, and you can decide we are spinning and then we show. Um, so that was very simple. There was actually more I thought we could do with this, but the activity sheet was getting really long um, and I didn't want you guys to get bored. So let's just go look at our adventure modes real quick. So another concept, so we talked about algorithms, which is a series of steps, right? So like with baking the cake, we follow, we got the ingredients, we mix them, we bake them, ta-da, we have a cake. We didn't really do the decorating part, um, but you don't always have to decorate a cake. So you can see when you bake in code, you also clean up. So you'll always, you'll throw away the eggshells, you'll start rinsing things as the cake is baking and putting things away that you don't need. You do the same thing in coding. When we're done using something, we either um, delete it or clear it off. There's something in Java called garbage collection. Do you get rid of it because that space is important? Just like with baking, you move the space on your counter. Um, so you might know a way to, once we've used the egg and milk, can you guys figure out a way to hide them from the screen so that they're not visible anymore? Um, we don't. We showed you one way to do that with the cakes. You can kind of look at that code again, and maybe figure how to do that for the, um, the egg and the milk. Um, we also know that cake doesn't just, right? Our cake really appears fast once we send that message. So is there a way you can add some fake time to the code so that it maybe has a delay before it shows between the message being sent and it shows up on the screen? You can also use this as an e-card. You can, um, if you have an account and this is saved somewhere, you can share it publicly and then you can um, send it to somebody's email address or their phone. You can just share the link and you can add a message telling them happy birthday or congratulations or um, thank you for whatever you've done for me or um, stuff like that. So those are some, some things you can do there. Other ideas, maybe you can make a kitchen background or add other ingredients. There's lots you can do with this. Um, and I think you were given enough of the basics to really work with it and expand the code. If you want to work on these together, sign up for our live session over here. Remember, go to this green uh, button on our page and you'll be able to sign up there. And if your parents are following us on social media or if you're old enough to follow us on social media, we announce a lot there, so pay attention to those channels for upcoming news and programs. Other than that, uh, we're done for the day. I hope to see you guys at our live sessions and I really hope you enjoyed this lesson.